Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back for another Total War video with the Terminator. Over the last year, it's been my personal mission to showcase and play some of the best and most underrated mods out there for Total War games. From Shogun 2's Last Alliance to Attila's Medieval Warfare or Troy's Agony, there are some incredible mods out there that are worth playing, many of them unknown, and they all provide incredible Total War gameplay. Today, I'm spotlighting a mod that has been on my list for a long time. It's a project that has had years and years of blood, sweat, and tears, continuous effort, and to be perfectly honest, it's probably known as the best and most popular mod ever made for any Total War game. And that is, of course, Stainless Steel for Medieval 2 Total War. In this video, I'll be exploring everything about Stainless Steel and specifically the most up-to-date version of the mod with the Stainless Steel Historical Improvement Project. Project. I'll be showing you new campaign mechanics, factions, units, AI behavior, everything. And by the end, I guarantee that you will have no choice but to try it out yourself. So let's get started. Stainless Steel was first released back in 2011 and started off as a simple combination of loads of little mods here and there to provide a proper full overhaul of Medieval 2. In the years up to 2017, the mod grew and evolved into improving every single aspect of the game to make it more historically accurate, more replayable, and more challenging. Now, development of the mod stopped in 2017, but since then, we've had a sub-mod called the Stainless Steel Historical Improvement Project. This is a sub-mod that still has active development today, and it essentially aims to continue the work of Stainless Steel while improving the mod itself in technical ways as well. So bugs and crash issues have been drastically reduced, there are new factions with new units, there are new campaign mechanics and battle stats, all of it has been redone for more flavor, meaning, and immersion. The main difference between Stainless Steel and this project can be simply summarized with, it's a less buggy and even more immersive version with more content, with the only drawback being the High and Late Era campaign isn't released yet. This is a campaign you can play in the original Stainless Steel, but not in the Historical Improvement Project just yet. We do have the Early Era campaign though, which starts on the year 1132 AD and includes 29 fantastic playable factions. We have Scotland, England, France, Aragon, Leon and Castile, Portugal, Almoravids, Norway, Denmark and the Holy Roman Empire. We've got Venice, Pisa, the Papal States, Sicily, Poland and Hungary, Serbia, Lithuania, Novgorod, Kiev, the Kumans, the Byzantines, the Rum, the Crusader States, the Fatimids, Georgia, the Zengids, the Abbasids and the Selchuks. All absolutely brilliant factions with unique units, unique historical events, buildings, characters, you name it. It's all historically accurate and all of them are a lot of fun to play. Play. When you choose your faction and you get into the campaign, the first thing you'll notice, of course, is that the campaign map is exceptionally larger than Vanilla Medieval 2. The modders have essentially removed the discoverable American continents across the Atlantic so that the overall European continent has a lot more landmass, but also so that the campaign map can be extended out east and south. There's much more territory now deeper into Russia, into the Caucasus, the Arabian Peninsula is now fully conquerable, and of course there's more Africa, a lot more. This goes hand in hand of course with more regions, more settlements, roads, landmarks, there's essentially a lot more campaign to get stuck into here. What makes the experience so much better than ever before though is the historical immersion and new gameplay mechanics. With the real life characters, the accurate faction and settlement names, the unique unit rosters, the scripted technological developments and upgraded economy systems, the modders have done an insane amount of work to not only make stainless steel easier to install and more stable to play, but have a lot more content to keep things interesting and engaging for hundreds and hundreds of turns. To give you just a few examples, the trait and ancillary system have been completely overhauled with your governors able to gain unique titles, for example, like Duke of York or Emir of Cordoba, which provide specific bonuses. Or generals are more likely to gain bonuses for engaging directly in battle, and they'll be more likely to become cowards if they don't. There are new event scripts such as William Wallace appearing in Scotland, the Bulgarian Uprising, or the Mongol 
conquest of Karakatai, all of which keep you challenged and immersed throughout your campaign. And there's even a new crown system where when a monarch dies, you need to spend money to keep the crown in the preferred bloodline or risk losing a massive amount of loyalty from your nobles. What I'm describing here isn't just another Total War mod, this is borderline Crusader Kings Total War, where generals that hold titles matter, where cities that have merchant guilds can actually make a huge impact, where the AI is a lot more dynamic and at times aggressive. It properly feels like you're not just managing a faction and its expansion across the map, but you're also managing a detailed economy, you're managing characters, a difficult geopolitical situation, you're managing a military that needs strong leaders and a mix of unique fantastic units. Best of all though, and you really really feel it with this mod, is some of these new mechanics scale up and are a lot more impactful at higher difficulties. So if you play on normal, you'll have a mostly breezy time, with some of these mechanics present, some of them not really present, others not really that effective. But on hard and very hard difficulties, you start getting army supply systems. You start getting the fully implemented crown system, making your faction leaders so much more important than before and making new faction leaders costly to actually be given the crown. Loyalty, battle effectiveness, recruitment costs, even more scripted events, all of this scales up with higher difficulties, which is something Total War just generally does not do. Finally, of course, we have the Battles of Stainless Steel. As I've said before, there are hundreds of new units, reskinned and brand new. They all look absolutely brilliant, and they do really, really well in the battles in terms of balancing as well. We've got an army morale system, which gives a lot more importance to playing your battles tactically and enhances features like general proximity and general engagement in the battle, giving more bonuses. Hundreds of unit stats across the board have been updated and tweaked for more balance and challenge and the AI should be recruiting armies that give you a lot more challenge on the battlefield as well. So, all really, really good stuff here in battles as well. Overall, I think you can see why I needed to spotlight this brilliant mod. Alongside other historical Medieval 2 mods like Broken Crescent, Sardom's, or the Italian Wars, Stainless Steel and the Historical Improvement Project especially stand out to be at the top with gameplay that is always immersive, always engaging, and always replayable. There are still some bugs and crash issues here and there, but they're not that common anymore. And of course, development is still ongoing, so they should be hashed out soon enough. And we have the high and late era campaign to look forward to, so hopefully that releases soon as well. For a super quick installation of either Stainless Steel itself or the submod Historical Improvement Project, all you have to do is go into either of the links I've dropped below in the video description, download the file which you need to unzip using WinRAR or 7-zip, and place the overall folder, so the main folder, into your Medieval 2 Mods folder. You might get a Kingdoms file not located error, which if you do, don't worry, the easiest solution is to copy paste your Medieval 2 exe file and rename it to Kingdoms. To launch the mod, all you need to do is go into the mods folder, into stainless steel and hit the SS launcher exe file. And that's it for today guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comment section below. Subscribe for more Total War content, gameplay and news just like this, and thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.